What's going on? It's Derek Clamartin from CodeOpinion.com, and I'm here to tell you that feature toggles are just conditional statements. I'm kidding a little bit. We all know that they can be really powerful, and they're a great way to integrate our code so that we can deploy features, but not necessarily have them released and used in production until they're ready. But they have actually a lot more utility than that. So I'm gonna explore that a little bit more, different ways of thinking about it, because they're more than just toggle switches. I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. In its simplest form, we're really just talking about configuration, ultimately. We have some deployment process where we actually deploy our application, and it can be just a static config file, in code, something red that lives next to it, whatever the case may be, it really is just configuration. And you can take it a step farther where that configuration isn't local, rather it's in a configuration store or somewhere that you can load it dynamically at runtime and change it at runtime so you don't have to rebuild or restart your application. Rather you just use some configuration store at startup, you fetch that config, that config can be something like secrets for like a connection string or just regular configuration. And that's ultimately where you're using. If you make some change to your configuration store, depending on which type you're using, it can dynamically refetch that or be notified that it changed. So you can then update that configuration, whatever the configuration is, a connection string or a feature flag. And that's where I want to start is just really thinking about feature flags as really just configuration because there's a lot of things you can do with them. As I mentioned, oftentimes I just thought about, okay, I want to enable or disable a feature, but it goes much farther than that. Not necessarily thinking about a feature as like an end user or something the user can do, but it can even be more technical. As an example of this, let's say we're using a cache. So our app hits our configuration store. Let's say it gets the connection string to what our cache is and it's just using that. So it's using our cache, but then for some reason there's something, maybe there's a new major version of that cache, or maybe there's a cache completely separately that we wanna start using. That's a completely different product. Well, one of the ways that we could do that is kind of that migration process is make a feature flag for it. So we could decide, okay, well, we're gonna introduce this. And then in that configuration store where we're gonna define this feature flag, so we're gonna turn it on, but maybe we decide for, and a lot of feature kind of products that do this have different ways to distribute. So maybe it's not just an all on or off type thing, but it's maybe for a subset of users or a percentage of users, which I'll show in a second, is that we could say, okay, well, for a certain number of users, we're actually gonna turn on that flag so we can actually point them to that other configuration of what that cache is of the, that connection string, and we can just start using it. Then maybe we full blown let everybody start using it, but uh-oh, there's an issue, maybe that it's not handling it the way it is. We're experiencing bugs because we didn't really know based on the load. We did a lot of testing, but not under the same load as production. Well, we can just flick back and kind of really do a rollback so we can stop everything from going from that new cache back to our old cache. So it kind of gives us a way that kind of like as a migration path forward, potentially with a rollback so we can move back everybody back if something goes wrong. Now there's a few things I want to point out with this. You can think of it, yes, as a migration from one infrastructure to another behind the scenes, not necessarily it needing to be, I'm rolling out this feature and I want to toggle it on for a subset of users. You're still kind of similarly doing the same thing, but just behind the scenes for some type of migration. Now you also may be thinking about it like, well, isn't this kind of like AB testing a little bit? And it kind of can be in the sense of, okay, we have this subset of users that are using this particular piece of infrastructure or this feature. And then we decided let's test something else to see if it's actually gonna be sustainable. So yeah, you can also think of it kind of in that AB testing mode. But in either case, there's this thread of thinking of them as temporary. And I think a lot of people think of feature toggles as being something temporary. So whether it was that kind of that migration of once we're done the migration, well, we can remove that feature toggle. Or if we were doing some AB testing, we came to some conclusion, then we'd remove the feature toggle. And, or if we're finally released that feature, we can remove the feature toggle. And that's actually kind of one of the quote unquote issues or people, a lot of people have with uh, feature toggles is once something's done, uh, we have this in our configuration, this feature toggle, but we need to remove it from code. It's kind of one of those hard things to keep in, like, in sync. But this idea of thinking of them as always being temporary isn't really the case. An example of this is let's say we have a multi-tenant application where we have one tenant, it's using payment gateway A, whatever that is, but we could have an, another tenant or different tenants that use a completely different payment gateway based on their configuration. Now you might be thinking, hang on here, that has nothing to do with feature toggles. And you're kind of right, kind of wrong, because in this video at the very beginning of it, I was saying, I was using the term feature toggle, but a lot of the time what I'm really talking about are feature flags. 
ultimately your feature toggling on off values are different execution paths depending on what that value is at runtime and whether we're updating that at runtime or not what those values are but really what's much more useful in a lot of situation are feature flags which yes are on or off but if they are on actually having a value to them multiple different values depending on your use case so in my case right there your feature flag for a particular a tenant is which actual payment gateway are they using? And that's why I said they're not temporary because you can have feature flags that have multiple different options and that different tenants are using those options. You could be adding new options. You could be removing new options, but you aren't necessarily removing the feature flag. Again, the feature flag in and of itself, it's value on off, whatever the case may be, is just different execution paths based on what those values are. In terms of API design, feature flags can be really powerful as a way to guide your clients and tell them, the consumers of your API, what type of actions, what types of things that they can do, whether it's temporary or permanent. So for example, I'll have a link to this video that I've done using this example at the end of this video about some API design. But the idea is about affordances here and these operations that I'm providing for my small toaster example. We can see that right now the state is off, the strength of it is zero, and we have two operations. We can power it on or we can change the strength. But the strength portion, I actually have behind a feature flag. So right now it's true. If I turn this just like a kind of a feature toggle in and of itself, we can change that to false. And then no, no longer do we have the option to even perform that operation. And if you're building your clients to really understand what the operations that I can perform based off the responses, then you can have a much more dynamic UI that allows you to turn off features, turn on features, subset of features, regardless of whether it's kind of a toggle on off or whether it's something more like a feature flag that allows different tenants to do things based on what that values are of those configurations. So going back to my silly toaster example and my janky UI, I'm just out of putting here the JSON of what the HTTP response was. We can see that the state's off, strength zero. Our operation is we can power it on. So I can power it on. If it's on, I can turn it off. That's the operation available. So we're there, but I still, I have this feature toggle off. We can turn it to true. And if I do that, now we're gonna give the availability to our end user, which we've defined in our UI with a conditional statement saying, hey, if the strength operation exists, then you can actually change the strength. But if the strength is not there, then we can just not show that control, that type of operation to our end user. Feature toggles are a great way to continuously integrate code, to have that deployed a part of your production, but not necessarily released to production till you wanna flip that toggle. But take it a little bit farther in terms of feature flags and thinking about ways to deal with migrations, rollbacks, maybe different tenants and multi in kind of a SaaS environment that it's not necessarily a temporary thing, but it's still just different execution paths depending on what those values are. And lastly, just being able to use them to guide your clients, to understand what operations that you can perform. If you're doing even something like a migration or some type of temporary feature flag where it's uh, releasing some type of feature, being able to turn that off without really killing the user experience of what that front end looks like because you're driving your clients on what they can and cannot do. I'd love to hear your experience with feature flags and feature toggles. What type of services you're using to manage them? Let me know in the comments. If you have questions or other thoughts and you wanna chat with other software developers about topics like this on feature toggles, anything related to software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.